I couldn't have survived last year without him. Our son Justin passed away January 25th of 2016. So it's been a little over a year. It's been a tough year, but it was also a very tough 12 years of addiction with Justin. I'm probably gonna say tonight, I or my, when I refer to him, but I really mean our son. So if I make that mistake, I just want you to know that. Justin was a precocious kid. He was a fun kid. We spent all of our time together as a family. Jeff made every effort to be home every night for dinner. We had breakfast together. We took vacations together. We did everything together. So facing the fact that your child has a drug problem is almost impossible to even consider because we did everything right as far as we felt. We really did. We tried. He tried pot in high school, and unfortunately, he found he really, really liked it. He was not much of a drinker, but he really enjoyed pot. I think we knew we had a bit of a problem there, and in retrospect, probably we should have done more at that point than we did. But let me tell you one thing about pot, addiction, drugs. The real problem is, is that you, or at least I'm gonna say me, I felt ashamed. This couldn't possibly be happening in my home, in our home. I looked around the neighborhood at all the other families and they all seemed perfect to me. And it makes you feel like, what am I doing wrong? What is it that I'm doing or I'm missing that this kid, beautiful kid, could go out and decide that pot was that important to him? It graduated to Vicodin, and then he was in a car accident, and he went to the doctors with a sore back, and they started prescribing painkillers. Little did we know at that time what we were facing. We had no clue. Just so happened he was merrily on his way to college at CU Boulder. And he found that doctors in Boulder are very happy to prescribe a lot of different drugs. And they don't even really care how much pain you're in. He must have gone to countless drugs, uh, doctors to get drugs. I'm going to shorten the story a little bit and just tell you over the next 12 years, we lost track of how many rehab programs he went to, how many sober homes he went to, and a lot of them aren't sober, how many times he was incarcerated, and for what. I don't even remember anymore. The last time he was in jail, I don't even remember what it was for. I think both of us were waiting for him to hit rock bottom. You hear that term a lot. But he kept falling further and further and further and further, and we couldn't figure out when that event was going to happen, when he was going to figure out that this was not who he is, this is not who he was meant to be. Fast forward, after countless opportunities to get well, our son didn't make it. He lost his fight with addiction. I don't want that to happen to any of you or any of your families. Jeff and I both feel very strongly about this, and he'll be here afterwards if you want to talk to him from a father's standpoint. But losing your son to something like this is just, I can't even explain it to you. So what I'm asking for you to do is to put away your sense of shame, not wanting to ask for help, afraid to bring up the topic. You guys are brave to be here tonight because there's a lot of parents out there that aren't here that probably should be here. So I applaud you for taking this step to try and understand what's going on in our country, okay? I wanna thank you all again for turning out and I wanna tell you that our boy was not just an addict, as Jim said, they're people. He was kind, considerate, loving, funny, incredibly funny. 
He had a great future ahead of him. My job now is to talk to people like you so that you don't go through what Jeff and I have gone through. That's really important to me. So I'm going to be here. I'll be honest with you. Jeff will be here afterwards if you want to talk to him. But I don't want you to have to experience the pain that we've gone through. Thank you.